Hello there, my dear students. Welcome back to the Joseph Academy. Today's class will be about how to be most effective with Jojo in a match, meaning uh, what you should do when you begin the match, what you should do in the middle or certain situations. So basically what you should prioritize in a few situations that I uh, had in mind. But before that, um, I just wanted to quickly say that today is our second anniversary on the Discord server, which means uh, I officially opened the server publicly exactly two years ago today, which is a nice little celebration. I really wanted to post a video too, um, so we have a more memorable day, but feel free to join if you haven't already, we would love to have you. But anyway, let's get back to our lovely photographer masterclass. The beginning will be with my strategy, not the one where you take a picture immediately, but the tips uh, from mid game and late game will be uh, usable for everyone. So just sit tight and wait for that part if you are not using this current strategy. So our main focus here uh, early game typically is to gain as much presence as possible. So always make sure to know for sure where uh, at least one survivor is, which uh, unlocks of course the first uh, skill of Jojo. Uh, do not take a picture, just bluntly out of uh, nothing when you just maybe have tinnitus, but not sure where the survivor is. Here you can say I rather waited um, a little bit more time than just took a random picture but because as I mentioned in a few previous videos sometimes we can get um, panicked a little when we can't find anyone and just take a picture of nothing and even on these, in, the, uh, in those situations it's much better to wait and make sure to find someone of course I don't mean to wait until I don't know for cypher spot but make sure to have at least one secure down uh, so you have the first kill done all right, next, um, if your early game wasn't the luckiest, meaning you got one person only and you really just would need a uh, presence, I don't know how the hit missed, that was just um, terrible, anyways, then either uh, try to visit shaking ciphers, but make sure they are shaking and just uh, go uh, there without knowing, or just chase someone that you can... Um, at least prevent them from decoding because just walking around uh, just trying to find someone down for an excessive period of time will not do you any good so the least you can do here is at least chasing someone actively preventing them for deco from decoding or uh, going towards shaking cipher which might have um, a better decoder if you uh, somehow found the saver first so basically don't do what I, I did in this match right now. This was uh, not a good move in any case, there was no one here. But yeah, at least I took the picture before uh, the explorer was healed. Another important thing is uh, not to let yourself get worked up or just act out of panic. Um, as you can see a lot of time passed, uh, around like 3 minutes into the match, in other hunter uh, matches there would be a few cyphers popped already, thankfully we only have uh, one popped currently, but just make sure to get the presence and do prioritize presence over the unhealable one hit, even if it's very tempting, I know, to just one hit someone and make them unhealable for the rest of the match, make sure to rather double hit um, when you don't have full presence yet. After you have full presence, you can go with the one hits and the uh, making the team uh, prevent them from healing but before you reach full presence I would advise you to always just down someone fully even if it's a perfumer even if it's a I don't know regardless of who they are just make sure to just go for the present that's your main focus in the beginning of the game then um, if you didn't find the one you managed to down with photo word then you will have to chase of course uh, which can well either work out or not. It depends on really the survivor's uh, ability to kite or like their luck if they are in a good position, a good place in the map. But always try to decide um, which character is worth chasing more. Here, 
Both of them were very good fighters, meaning the enchantress can stun, so as such as the professor, uh, which kind of put me in a different uh, position, but always make sure either, uh, if you remember, maybe um, one of them had a badge, like an S badge or an A badge, and I would recommend, or I would personally uh, go for the uh, no badge uh, version. Of course, this is not always true, but somehow you have to decide, and maybe another hit went to the character, great, maybe. So you always have to just try to focus on one character that's uh, better for you to chase or easier for you to chase. Typically a decoder or just a character who can't really stun you. Um, yeah, so basically just try to always hold the one, not like if you personally, let's say you hate enchantresses, just don't go after the enchantress if, if the other one is, either one maybe is an easier kite. So just always remember to quickly decide if you see two characters, maybe same health um, scenario, so like they are both one hit, then always choose the one who you think is uh, easier to down for you personally. When you're camping, I would uh, encourage you to use the second skill, if you're unlocked it already of course, and walk around nearby uh, the chair, maybe you can catch the rescuer early, uh, if you're not sure if there are a lot of obstacles and you think they are hiding nearby, then of course don't. But it can be a really nice thing to just hit them and maybe you can even catch them before the rescue. So do, um, do not be afraid to use the second skill and just walk around uh, the close vicinity of the chair. You can just let it go anytime and it will get you back to the chair. And even if they already saved, you will be right there ready to hit the, either the rescue or the rescued person. Another important thing after the rescue, always make sure to follow up with um, the character you uh, put on the chair before, not go for the rescuer, make sure not to lose them even if you think you can get a hit of, another hit off of the rescuer, because that's how eliminating the first person is very crucial to the game, you should prioritize that than hitting um, a new character uh, or downing the new character every time. Another important thing is not to forget taking pictures. It's uh, really easy to just get out of your mind when you're in the middle of chasing or chairing, but always make sure to take pictures um, and not lose focus of what really your uh, point in the match is. So don't let yourself get distracted or go after another uh, very different survivor than the one you were chasing and uh, try to use photo words to your advantage at every time. If you have stunners in a match, um, it's very uh, crucial or beneficial uh, to chair their mirror. So if you could, uh, if you happen to chase another one or happen to find someone, then they will be um, useless technically because they will be either down or you can just wait until photo word ends so they go down in real world. So basically it's a real thing you can help yourself with, just like here, what happened to the enchantress. She didn't even have time uh, enough to stun me because she went down and it would have been much harder to catch her, especially with her buff um, where, she, where her first few stuns will load faster or charge faster. So really it's very nice to down either good kiters or hard to catch uh, characters in general, uh, down with them with photover this really um, a nice little touch. Typically you want to chair either close to a cipher that's being decoded or um, you know to keep them from decoding it or very far away from the rest of the team so it's harder for them to get there in time meaning you will uh, have a chance to stop the save uh, at uh, all completely or uh, just make them save after half. Late game, meaning after all the ciphers have been popped, you typically just want at least one survivor, just down one survivor, even if it makes you get the tie or the win, or just the last person, it depends of course, but you just focus on one person. It can be a nice strategy to just teleport back and forth between the two gates, but it's really hard to uh, manage that. So I would just recommend focusing on one single survivor, making sure you found them and finish the match. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and found something you can use in your future matches. Until next time, goodbye!